last video I spoke about binging and the three key factors that I think cause it. In this video I want to share with you my three point strategy for overcoming it. I won't pretend it's easy. It's taken me about 35 years to feel fully recovered. <laughs> I have struggled a lot. I've done it all on my own and I've learned a lot along the way. Now hopefully by sharing with you some of my insights, you may not have to struggle as much as I did to overcome your own binging problems. So the first step of my strategy to stop binging is to stop denying yourself anything. Now if you were to see an actual eating disorder specialist, I can pretty much guarantee they would tell you that to stop binging you have to stop dieting. That kind of uh, doesn't sit well with me. One, because I did diet and lose 28 kilos and get over my whole binging problem. But two, because I don't think eating specialists are necessarily um, the ones who know exactly how it feels to have an eating disorder and how it feels to be inside your head. To be so overweight and so desperately want to lose weight and unable to stop binging and being told, well, you've got to forget about the weight and if you really want to stop binging, you can't, you know, worry about losing that weight. So my strategy to lose weight and get the binging under control is to start cutting down what you eat but not drastically and factor in all your favourite foods so you don't feel deprived. I think a good rule to follow is the 80-20 split where 80% of what you eat is pretty nutritionally sound and then the other 20% is whatever the hell you feel like eating and that's quite a lot of delicious food that you can factor into your total plan and you're not going to get those terrible cravings so you're not going to feel like you need to binge because I would allow myself something delicious to eat every single day don't make yourself wait you know once a week for a cheap day or something like that eat it every day and then you'll be satisfied with a smaller portion because you know you can have it the next day and the day after that and the day after that so there's no need to you know gorge on anything everything is available to you nothing is banned and nothing is restricted the second part of my strategy is to know your triggers and then cope with them. Now triggers are foods or situations that you know cause you to binge. I'll start with food triggers. Now just because you love a particular food doesn't make it a trigger. Take me for example, I love Maltesers. I buy them in family packs and I can just eat you know, a small amount and feel totally satisfied, put the pack away and I don't feel the urge to keep eating them. But take a food like cashews, that was a really big trigger food for me. Something about cashews, I could not stop at a handful, I would just keep eating and eating until the whole bag was gone. So the way that I handled my trigger food, cashews, was to find another food that is similar to cashews but not quite as amazingly delicious to me and not quite as irresistible. So anytime I got the urge to eat cashews, I would substitute dry roasted almonds. Dry roasted almonds are still really, really nice, but I can eat a handful of those and I don't feel the urge to keep eating and eating because for me, they're not just out of this world cashew nut delicious. They're, they're nice enough, but not amazing. So that was how I would handle trigger foods. The other thing about trigger foods is that they can actually lead you to full on binges where if you can't stop eating the trigger food, like say ice cream and you polish off the tub and then you go, oh, well, I've just stuffed up my whole diet. I'm just going to keep eating and eating and eating now. So trigger foods can be dangerous in that respect. If you find that you can't find a substitute for your trigger foods, I would just actually avoid them altogether. There's always other foods that you love that aren't going to have that effect. So you might be better off just getting certain foods out of the house so that they're not there as a temptation. Situations can also be triggers. Um, I used to find the worst thing for me was when I had a whole day with the house to myself and nothing to do. That would guarantee that I would just plan a binge. 
because you know I had all this privacy you know I could just buy whatever I wanted cook it eat it and it was terrible so what I should have done knowing that having the house to myself is a trigger situation I should have just planned to meet up with a friend or just plan something really nice for myself to do that's as good or better than eating like a nice massage or I could have gone and get, got my hair done or gone shopping just something to get me out of the house because I knew it was a danger situation for me so identify situations that you know set you off and think about how you can handle them differently or avoid the situation entirely now my third strategy to stop binging is to get creative now I'm no neurologist but I'm pretty certain that different parts of your brain do different things You've got memory, you've got the part that dreams, you've got your analytical side, you've got your emotional part, you've got your creative part. And I found that when one part of your brain is switched on, it's really hard for those other parts to get a look in. I guarantee if you can get passionate about something, find something that absolutely absorbs you, you will never have the urge to just stop what you're doing in the middle to go and have a binge. Everybody, I think, is creative in some way, whether it's music or art or sewing or craft or restoring old furniture or cars or even writing computer software everybody's got a talent or an ability for something if all else fails and you really can't think of a single thing that you're creative at why not just write a book i think everybody's got one book in them it might not be a particularly well-written book or even a book that anybody else is going to want to read but just writing something down if you can't think of, you know, like fiction, just write your own story. Write about your own feelings and what you've been through. I think it's so therapeutic and rewarding and absorbing just writing. So that's my three-point strategy to stop binging once and for all. I hope there's something in this video that is helpful for you if you have similar struggles. Maybe leave me a comment and let me know how you deal with binging and your own strategies to stop binging. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, please give me a thumbs up and I would love you to subscribe to my channel just by clicking the subscribe button below. I'll have a new video for you next fabulous Friday and I look forward to seeing you then. Bye!